So this is part two of the golf cart series and today we're gonna to swap out the battery. And this is the lithium battery that we were previously using. This is a 13S lithium iron phosphate so the nominal voltage is pretty low for that speed controller and motor configuration in the golf cart. This only runs at 43 volts. So I'm gonna to try to put a 16S configuration lithium iron phosphate in there because with this battery, we can only hit 14 miles per hour and I can't really upgrade the speed controller because of the constraints on the BMS. And the first battery I wanted to try was Battleborn because these have a max surge of 200 amps for one second. So I figured that these would work great, but I was actually completely wrong. Um, the moment I try to turn this thing on, the initial inrush or surge actually puts two of these into safety mode. And I even use a pre-charge resistor just to do that initial inrush and it still went into safety mode. So yeah, I need to take these out. This was a bad idea. So fast forward a week later and after the Battleborns failed, I was planning on building my own battery pack, but I couldn't find a 16S BMS for lithium iron phosphate that would ship out to me fast enough because there's lots of shipment delays. So I told Big Battery about my problem and they're actually gonna change their golf cart conversion listing. The previous battery that we had is perfect for 36 volt golf carts, but it's not that great for 48 volts. So they're gonna have two Tesla Model 3 packs in series so that you have a higher voltage and better performance. And last night I hooked this all up and it works perfectly. And for this application, I think these will work better. They're smaller and lighter than the lithium iron phosphate and there's more capacity and look how small they are. It's just these two packs and they gave me this cable with Anderson 175 amp connectors. And so these are in series and everything's done. So let's take it for a test drive and see if it's any faster than the previous battery pack because we might have a speed limiter on this motor controller. So we'll find out right now. And already I can tell we have better acceleration. All right, max speed was 16 miles per hour. So it's not that much of an improvement, but it accelerates much faster now. It feels so much better. It really had some lag previously. It took forever to start up. So this battery configuration works perfectly and we have increased capacity. It's a 4.6 kilowatt hour battery. So we should get like 20 miles of range with this configuration. But I do need to secure these batteries down still and we also need to add a watt meter. This is also a coulomb meter so we can figure out the state of charge of the battery. It also tells us how many watts are going through this main conductor that supplies the main power lines. And this is the Droke Hall Effect Sensor Coulomb Meter and Watt Meter. I'm just going to install it on the front here and run these five conductors to it from the back. We have some zip ties and we're gonna attach these wires to the chassis at random points just so it doesn't move around. And there's a lot of moving parts right here so I'm trying to attach them as close to the chassis as possible. And these two conductors are for voltage sensing and these go out to the Hall Effect sensor which is right here. And the coulomb meter has these power lines connected directly to the battery, so we're going to add a small fuse. Now that the meter is connected to the battery, we can finally plug in the Hall Effect sensor and turn it on and see if it works. <laughs> and check it out, it actually works. So I probably have to calibrate it, but yeah, I'll figure that out later. Something else I did this morning is I removed the solar panels from the golf cart because I realized that with this new larger capacity battery, it would take three days of full sunshine to charge it up. So what I'm gonna do instead is use this as a mini charging station. I'm gonna have two wires that go out to the golf cart and the golf cart will have an integrated solar charge controller. So it can charge up its battery when I'm done using it for the day. But carrying all of this weight around is not worth it. So yeah, I'm taking the solar off. Now the last big upgrade I wanna do is adding this 48 volt 1.7 or 1.8 kilowatt inverter charger. So that means that I could charge up this golf cart with solar, with AC, and I could use this to power power tools anywhere I please. But it's really big, so I'm gonna to try to fit it in there between the batteries. 
And it actually fits, you guys. This is great. So now we just need to tie this thing down and we are set. I've had to redo this part so many times, it's driving me nuts. We have a 120 volt output, so now we can run power tools. We have a power strip over there. And this also comes with an AC charger, so if we add an extension cord with a male prong, we can plug this into a wall or a small solar generator as a backup. So if I want to extend the range of this golf cart, I can just plug a power supply directly into this while I'm driving and it will charge up these batteries. Before, I had to carry around a really heavy golf cart charger that originally came with it and it charged pretty slowly. So this is ideal. We'll be able to charge with solar, with AC, with mobile battery packs, and we can run power tools anywhere we please. So this is like the best. Now we have an extension cord connected and we're gonna try to charge it. And it will charge, but we need to set the absorption manually because we have a custom profile for this cell configuration. So we're gonna set this to 58.8 volts for the absorption. And the max absorption is 58.4, so that will have to do, unfortunately. And it's charging right now, you guys. But the battery's already full, so it's already hit float. So yeah, we need to go drive it a bit. And what's nice is that the coolant meter is actually connected on the side so I can see both the loads and the chargers. So if I'm charging this battery system with an EcoFlow Delta while driving, I can see if it's compensating enough to actually extend the range of this vehicle. So yeah, and I can also change the charge speed as well because when I'm charging at home, I wanna charge it slowly so that these cells last a long time with this chemistry. And we should test the output of the inverter so we have a load attached and it works. So now we can power whatever we want anywhere we want to. And a cool potential application is using a larger inverter to power a welder. And then you can have a welder with an off-road electric vehicle. And you can also buy trailer hitches for this golf cart. And the trailer could be filled with solar panels. So we'll probably do that for a future video. That would be really cool. But for now, let's just put it back together again and drive it around the block. And check it out, the amps and the watts are displayed and the voltage, so this is awesome. Guys, it went over 100 amps. It's hard to film the meter while I'm driving, but the largest number I saw was 130 amps, which is a lot of power at 56 volts. All right guys, we're doing a hill test and we're gonna do some off-roading. Because this is a Droke shunt meter, I'm pretty sure we need to set the state of charge to zero and then charge it up so it can reset the capacity meter. <laughs> How cool is this, you guys? We can go off-road anywhere. some BLM land near my house and we are allowed to ride pretty much anywhere we please. And the battery capacity monitor only says that we've used 284 watt hours by going up this hill and the voltage is looking great so I think we can continue onward. <laughs> Look how far we went. How cool is this? to go up a pretty steep grade back there and it handled it great there's lots of torque and this is an AC motor and we are actually charging the battery while we go down this hill right now I've been driving the golf cart for about 30 minutes now and it's very hard to run down this battery it's really really efficient I think I could probably get like 25 miles out of this thing and I'm going up and down hills I'm trying to run the battery down quickly but it's really hard the voltage is not dropping much and with this chemistry the discharge curve is pretty linear so it's predictable and yeah like I said it's it's got a long ways to go and after that long drive I only used 695 watt hours so yeah this thing can go really far so in the next video, we're gonna figure out how efficient it is or how many miles I can go for how many watt hours. 
and possibly add another solar panel again that's smaller with a boost converter or a step up converter. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and it actually works. Everything works perfectly. So yeah, and it can go off road. So please check back soon for the next video. It's like 110 degrees in this garage right now. So I'm gonna head out. I will talk to you guys later, bye.